I have been playing as the France civilization in rise of kingdoms for years, but recently on a live stream, I switched to the Germany civilization. And I realized that I haven't talked about civilizations here on the channel in a while. So today we're going to break down what the best civilization is in rise of kingdoms for you as a player. We're going to go over a bunch of different roles that you can fill in the game. And we'll take a look at some super high powered players that use some of these different civilizations. Now I mainly get a lot of questions about civilizations from players who are new to the game and that makes sense because the first thing you do when you download rise of kingdoms is you're presented with a choice of a civilization and there's 13 different choices here and I usually think about this sort of like in Pokemon when you first start the game you have a choice between three different starters and here there's so many different starters that you can pick from and when I say starter I mean not only the Civ but the commander that you get as well because that is going to change the early game experience for you as a player so I think it's understandable that this first decision feels a little bit overwhelming for new players now the good news is that the effectiveness of your account in the late game pretty much has no correlation to which civilization you pick at the beginning this is essentially a micro optimization in the early game and in the late game you could just switch to another civilization for free using a civilization change item you can see in the bottom right corner here you get one of these for free I believe at City Hall 10 or 12 or something like that so again even if you pick the wrong civilization you can always switch for free around that time and also once you're in an alliance you can ask the leaders of that alliance to put these civilization tokens into the alliance shop this I believe costs two million alliance credits I I don't remember exactly it's been a while since I bought it but it's a little bit expensive but at least you can rest assured that there is a way for you to get it for free later down the line so don't worry about that so while we're on the topic of new players let's talk about which civilizations are the best for you to pick at the beginning of the game as a brand new player if you just downloaded rise of kingdoms there's three choices in my opinion that are really really solid the first one is Britain this is because you start with the epic commander Boudicca who gives you 20 percent extra bonus experience when fighting barbarians in the open field she also has some other really interesting things such as the five percent troop training speed which that does add up over time and troop training speed is is really good in the early game however troop training speed isn't as important as things such as building speed really the only reason you would pick Britain is Fort Boudicca so you can level up your commanders faster in the early game I think this is a great choice I personally think that the other two choices we're going to talk about are better and the second one is France now I mentioned this earlier I happen to really love France and as it turns out you get Joan of Arc as your starting commander with France now Joan of Arc is definitely one of the best epic commanders in the game there's no question about that however her role is more of a support role and a gathering role so if you're looking for PVE commander she is almost certainly not going to be one that deals damage and when you look at the buffs here again the buffs for France aren't particularly interesting for new players wood gathering speed is okay I guess the universal troop health is nice and again we'll talk about that later but for a new player the starting commander of Joan is excellent and the reason for that is she's one of the best gathering commanders in the entire game even to this day she gives you a 25 percent gathering speed bonus and a 25 percent load bonus which is very huge in the beginning of the game because you can't level up your buildings without resources and starting the game with one of the best gatherers in the entire game is going to be very useful especially because this is universal gathering speed which is not the case for the other gatherers in the game if we take a look here Matilda only has 25 percent stone gathering speed whereas again Joan of Arc gets all gathering speed so whether it's stone gold wood it doesn't matter if we look at Queen Tamar over here you could see she has a wood gathering bonus as well so France is a great pick and the other best choice and I think this might be the best choice and that is China and there's a couple of reasons why the first is you get five percent building speed and that is huge because one of the first bottlenecks that you face in the early game is getting your wall to 25 and your city hall to 25 and some of those later you know level 23 24 25 those later buildings do take a lot of days like literally months sometimes so having five percent a reduction to you know 70 days of building is going to be really really huge so you definitely want to have that also three percent universal troop defense is almost as good as the three percent health on France on top of that five percent actual point recovery is really really nice uh this is essentially going to help you grind out barbarians a little bit faster and a little bit more every single day I think most players probably won't even realize this extra five percent to be completely honest with you but it is nice and finally of course Sun Tzu is still uh, arguably the best 
epic commander in the game uh mainly for pvp in the early game but also the utility and damage and aoe that he provides in the early game is going to be really helpful for killing barbarians and other pve events also getting you through expedition sun tzu is going to be really good for that so there's just a lot to love about the china civilization and i think i started as china i think this is a really great choice to pick and honestly i just picked this because i thought sun tzu was cool and it turns out that it was a pretty good choice now of these three the only civilization that's relevant in the late game is France so if you want to just pick one civilization and never change it I guess France is your choice but I think most players will eventually want to change so that doesn't really matter next let's talk about which civilization is best for the mid to late game for free to play players and this is without a doubt Germany this is hands down this is the best civilization to pick for free to play players and that is because you get 10 percent action point recovery so remember China had five and Germany has 10. Not only that, but you also get 5% troop training speed. So that is one of the other cool things about Britain. But remember in the early game, this isn't that important, uh, but in the mid to late game, it is very important. Okay. A lot of your power and your effectiveness in the battlefield is going to come from having troops on hand and building those troops over time as a mid to late game player is going to be huge. But the reason this is the best choice for free to play players is again, because of the 10% action point recovery. If you're free to play, you have to be grinding barbarians a ton. For a bunch of different events whether it's a holiday event so you can collect enough of the holiday items to upgrade the different uh, progression reward paths right like that's going to be huge also in kvk when you're grinding kvk barbarians for a ton of free gems and value you want to have as many action points as possible and also during what's called marauders which is a pre kvk event uh where you can get a ton of value for free uh, the 10 percent action point recovery is going to be absolutely crucial for free to play players to get value out of doing the things that they can do as free to play, which is grinding. So that's going to be very, very huge. Also, Teutonic Knights are a pretty solid special unit here. We haven't talked too much about special units because this is a very late game uh, micro optimization that really only applies when you start to look at uh, rallies, garrisons, and obviously it applies to open field fighting as well. But we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So again, free to play players pretty much no question here pick Germany also if you are a mid to late game spender low spender mid spender or even a whale you should be switching to Germany in between KVKs so you know in KVK you should be picking whatever civilization helps you the most and we'll talk about that in this video but once you're not in KVK you are no longer fighting you are no longer doing PvP uh and so you should have Germany for the troop training speed and the action point recovery the troop training speed is just it's huge during the downtime so definitely go with Germany okay now let's talk about the best open field civilizations and what I mean by this is again if you're a new player it's going to be fighting in the open field okay so if you are battling another player if I were to attack this player right here which I'm not going to do but I could do that uh you would want the best civilization to help you in that specific scenario and yes this does matter there is a best civilization depending on your troop type now a lot of players these days have different armies in different troop types so sort of gone are the days where you're focusing on the special unit for whatever troop type your account is focused on now that's not to say that players aren't still skewed towards one troop type or another I think most players generally are and I think that that is a good strategy for example my account is skewed more towards infantry but other players may be skewed towards cavalry or archers so let's talk about the best open field civilization for cavalry and I honestly think that that's Ottoman Empire now that's gonna sound really weird because they actually do not have a special unit for cavalry but they do have some things that are super important such as five percent march speed this is very important in the open field and five percent active skill damage this is the part that makes this so good for pretty much any player honestly but very good for cavalry the reason for that is if we look at some of the highest uh damage dealing cavalry commanders all their damage comes from skill damage right Alexander Nevsky one of the best cavalry commanders in the game 2300 damage factor having a five percent bonus on that is going to be really really nice if you look at William very good 1500 much smaller damage factor but it is AoE early game players are going to have access to Saladin this is going to help you there as well probably most importantly is Joan of Arc Prime this is legendary Joan she has a 2000 damage factor AoE which is absolutely massive and she's going to pop this off twice every other skill cycle so I mean that's 4,000 AOE damage factor a five percent bonus to that is going to add up over time absolutely you also have to look at commanders like Zhang Yu who has a very low rage requirement so he's going to be popping off his 1700 damage factor AOE 
a ton and having again five percent bonus there is going to be huge now on top of that there's other commanders in the game that aren't cavalry commanders that you may still be using so for example honda has a really powerful aoe getting bonus skill damage to that is going to be really really premium and in the early game you're going to have mehmed who is again another aoe commander now on top of that as a cavalry player you're still going to have most likely an infantry and an archer march and so by picking the ottoman empire civilization you're essentially buffing all of your troop types right so even though if you are focused on cavalry you're still probably going to have an archer march with isong Ye, and five percent more skill damage for him is going to be huge if you have a infantry march with cpo and guan this is a very high double aoe skill damage uh, army so five percent bonus skill damage for them is going to be massive as well so if you are a cavalry cavalry player ottoman empire is probably the best choice and whatever army you happen to use for isong Ye is going to get a little bit of an extra bonus by having the special unit and the five percent extra archer health which is really nice unfortunately there's no five percent bonus active skill damage civilization that also gives you cavalry stats obviously that could change in the future lilith does seem to add one new civilization per year at this rate so we could see that in the near future and if that does happen of course we'll talk about that civ but right now let's take a look at what the best open field option is for infantry and infantry has two options the first one is ottoman empire ottoman empire is generally just an incredibly good open field choice the other choice for infantry is france and i talked about them earlier the reason for this is because just like ottoman empire uh, we have three percent bonus troop health and this goes for all troop types so if you have one cavalry army and one archer army they're still gaining a benefit from this three percent troop health and the reason that troop health is is so important here and why we're discussing it is because troop health is the stat that is the most difficult to obtain so unlike China that gives you defense it's just better to have troop health and when we say better we mean for getting a better kill to death ratio in your trades right because of course you could go all in on attack and deal a ton of damage but the moment you start taking damage back you're going to get melted so troop health is the best for your kill to death ratio on top of that the throwing axemen are the highest health unit special unit for infantry so if you have two or three infantry armies in the open field you're gaining a benefit not only from the bonus health here but also from having just a really high health unit in the open field which is really good now the other reason why you might pick this and I think this is one of the reasons why some of the mega whales pick this uh, civilization is 20 percent hospital healing speed now this sounds better on paper than it actually is because the way that stats like this work in the game is that it is additive so if you have hospital healing speed for other reasons for example alliance technology whole owning holy sites having a high vip level uh you know really it would only bring my already high 95 percent up to 115 percent so to really see a lot of value in the speed ups that you're saving here you would have to be healing a ton of troops in kvk and of course again if you are a mega whale that is definitely something that you would want to consider so I'll leave this one up to you guys if you want to pick Ottoman or France for open field infantry players I typically pick France but I may experiment with Ottoman Empire in my next KVK and we'll see how that goes and finally for Archer open field players Ottoman is a slam dunk obvious choice here uh this is just all the same reasons that we've talked about before but it's even better because you're gaining the five percent Archer health for all of your different choices in the open all your different uh, archer armies in the open field and you get a special unit for those different archer marches so no question this is the best choice now earlier I said that we would go through some of the different high power players that use these different civilizations currently the highest power player in the game is Yoda 808 he is rocking the Ottoman Empire civilization if we look at DN cookie he is rocking the Ottoman Empire civilization and we also have BT cyborg here who is a 750 million power player rocking Ottoman Empire now on the other hand Mimi is another one of the most powerful players in the game they have two accounts in the top 10 most powerful players and Mimi is rocking the France civilization here on their other account that's also over 900 million power they are rocking the France civilization and both these accounts they're not just focused on infantry they use a bunch of different commanders we can see in their commander page that we have actually more archers here than anything right and they still picked France and that just goes to show that it's a really good civilization for high power late game open field players and it's not just Mimi that uses this Kang 747 is a 423 million power player whose highest power ever was almost 1 billion so this is absolutely one of the most powerful players in the game I mean look at those kill points 
and they also use France as well okay next let's talk about rallies right if you're a player who is responsible for rallying objectives then you're probably going to want to pick something else now this part of the video is mainly for those super well players whether it's early game or late game because that's who's going to be doing the rallies but let's start with cavalry and cavalry have arabia this is pretty much the obvious choice here they give five percent cavalry attack and five percent damage dealt by rallied armies five percent damage is huge that is better than five percent skill damage because it's all damage that's massive of course they have the cavalry special unit the mom look and again five percent attack this is obviously the best choice for cavalry if we're talking about archers we have egypt and this is essentially the same thing five percent archer attack and five percent rallied army damage now they also have a special unit not going to try to pronounce that but egypt is obviously again the best choice for archer rallies and then when we come to infantry this is the interesting part infantry does not have a civilization that gives you five percent rallied army damage so if you are going to rally with infantry uh, you could pick Egypt or Arabia either of these makes sense uh, I mean why not I think in the late game you don't really have any use for the building and research speed so Arabia at least gives you 10 percent bonus damage to neutral units which I guess could help with events so I guess Arabia would be the best choice of these two for infantry however we have to talk about Vikings which we haven't talked about at all in this video but Vikings are surprisingly a good civilization for rallies the reason for this is because they also give you five percent extra attack but they also give you three percent counter attack damage now this applies to all of your armies whether it's an infantry army or a cavalry army or whatever but the way that counter attack damage is calculated is that it's based on the number of troops in your army and when you're rallying you're going to be dealing a lot of counter attack damage and if you boost that high number by three percent it's going to add up over time this is especially important important these days when rallies are more likely to get swarmed than ever now again if you're rallying with like something like pakal for example it's unlikely that you're going to get swarmed anyway so this might not be that useful but if you are rallying with anything else that again has a high probability of being swarmed then vikings is probably going to be your best choice for infantry rallies all right now let's move on to garrisons because garrisons are a little bit different uh than rallies because there are no civilizations like egypt or arabia that give you five percent bonus garrison damage or something like that and unfortunately that makes this category a little bit less exciting to talk about because we're going to talk a lot about the ottoman empire once again uh the five percent skill damage here is going to be really useful for cavalry players who are garrisoning and also for archer players players who are garrisoning because a lot of these garrison commanders these days have really nice skill damage and again skill damage just like all pretty much all damage in the game is dependent on how many troops or, or units that are behind that primary and secondary commander so in a rally or in a garrison scenario you're gonna be dealing really big skill damage numbers and you want to boost that as high as you can obviously this is a little bit better for archer garrisons than it is for cavalry garrisons because archers actually gain the benefits of the uh archer healthier and the special unit but even still the bonus skill damage here is huge some of these garrison commanders include artemisia who has a really high 1800 aoe damage factor we have yadviga whose damage factor is pretty low to be honest with you but it's still nice skill damage amanatore also really nice damage factor here and she has some uh, aoe here which is nice and then we have Jan Ziska, who has a really high single target damage factor of 2200 obviously Isong is uh maybe an early game garrison you don't see him too often but we also have to consider Eastern Sin who is typically a secondary to a lot of these garrisons who has a really powerful uh aoe damage here which is really really nice that skill damage is going to add up over time for sure and we also have heraclius coming into the game very soon who also has a 1200 circular aoe that might be used in some garrisons who knows we'll have to wait and see but the skill damage on these commanders is uh is nice and that's why you would want to use it things change of course for infantry where we talk again about vikings the reason for this is because zenobia who is one of the most popular infantry garrisons here does not do skill damage now, of course flavius does do skill damage which is very high so that's something to consider but a lot of times you're going to be using uh, zenobia and the infantry attack plus counter attack damage here is really nice again the counter attack damage is 
for swarms or also for just really long fights that counterattack damage is going to add up over time of course if you don't feel like switching to Vikings you could once again pick Ottoman Empire uh this is just going to deal more skill damage or if you're going to use something like a Flavius with CPO behind him maybe you want to pick Ottoman once again uh, and then we also have to talk about Rome Rome is interesting because this is only an infantry garrison that you would use in Ark of Osiris for one the March speed in Ark of Osiris is massive I mean the game is has a time limit so March speed matters more in Ark than anywhere else and also the infantry defense is more important than uh skill damage essentially in Ark of Osiris and that's not to say that you don't want to deal damage I know people are already typing the comment it's that you want to basically stall and be as tanky as possible in Ark of Osiris once again because you'd rather hold that objective longer than deal massive damage to the enemy because it's a points game right it's a timed points game so it just makes more sense that you would want uh, a more tanky garrison and the defense here for infantry is nice but again it's really that March speed is just huge and I guess the final thing we have to talk about is if you have a farm account what should you do and I think the answer is Japan Japan just gives you five percent more resource gathering speed which is just I mean obviously you're going to want that if your account is focused on farming farm accounts for those of you that don't know are secondary or tertiary accounts that you create with the sole purpose of just farming resources to send over to your main account so obviously this is pretty much the only reason you would ever pick Japan unfortunately because you know the Samurais look super cool and the civilization looks super cool but uh other than that, they're pretty much a horrible civilization to pick which sucks because a lot of the ads for rise of kingdoms tell you to pick Japan it's horrible like oh my god anyway guys with that being said if you enjoyed this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton comment down below your favorite civilization to play here in rise of kingdoms I would love to hear from you I'm really curious what your favorites are if you're new here subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace